Hello everyone. It is good to be back with you all. I have been away for a while because my laptop stopped exporting my videos and therefore I was not able to get them from the cam the laptop into a file. But it's good to be back. And I had made a promise to the Lord that I would take and um, share my salvation story with you all once I was able to start back recording. So this, I want this to be my first video. I remember the day that I got saved. I remember um, it was on a Sunday. We were all at church. And the message was, now is the time and the day of salvation. The scripture came out of Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, and I'll read that to you all. It reads, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. As I said before, the message was, now is the time and the day of salvation. I remember what made me begin, what made me accept the Lord into my life was that I was sitting in church and the altar call was given. And when the altar call was given, some people got up and went down. And the more the pastor kept on talking which was Pastor Matthew Norwood, Survival Way Church in Atlanta. The more he kept talking, the more people went to the altar. And when, uh, I'll say about three-fourths of the church had gone up to the altar, I remember I kept looking around, I kept looking over my shoulders, and I kept looking because people kept on going and I was sitting there and all of a sudden it looked like everyone had walked up to the altar and I, as I said I kept looking over my shoulders and all of a sudden a feeling came over me like almost as if it was the end of the world and everyone was going to Christ except for me and I remember saying, Lord, I don't want to be left. I don't want to be left behind. So I got up and I went down to the altar and I gave my life to Christ. And I would be lying if I said if I were, were to say that from that day on, I lived a perfect life. I lived a life that was pleasing to God because I didn't. I think I fell away twice from the Lord and over the years, I didn't. My life was nothing perfect. Um, you know, there are some people who try and pretend like they have such a perfect life because they gave, gave their lives over to the Lord. Well, I'm not one of those. Um, I made quite a few mistakes and I took the wrong road very a lot of times. And but now I am serious about the Lord. I love the Lord. I'm committed to him. I've given my life to him. I've uh, committed my life to him. And I live for him daily because I realized that the way that I was living and the things that I did did not work. And therefore, I am 100% totally committed to the Lord. I love him with my whole heart, and I put nothing and no one above him. My children, they have a place. They have their place, but God has that number one spot. And with the message having been, um, now it's the time and day of salvation, I want to admonish you all the same Mess with the same message that now is the time and the day of salvation and if you don't know Christ you need to give your life over to him 
And if you don't know how to do that, then what you do, you just take and pray and ask the Lord to come into your heart and you confess that, uh, confess your sins to them and ask to God and ask him to forgive you of any and all of your sins. And you ask him to come into your heart. And once you do that, um, if I, I, I recommend that you find a church that's really into the word of God. Um, I recommend that you commit yourself to studying his word because that's how you get to know the Lord and that's how you begin to have a personal relationship with the Lord. You invite him into your life and then you get into his word. He left this love story for us to um, get to know him and to learn to live for him. And I often tell people that having a relationship, developing a relationship with the Lord is like being married. Um, you have to commit yourself to, to the Lord. And you have to, the only way that you can get to know him is to get into his word. Don't go to church like I did in the beginning and just sit up and listen to the messages. Commit yourself to getting into his word. I suggest you start at the beginning in Genesis and work your way on through. I know it, it won't be an, an easy task and you won't understand everything right off. But I remember um, when I had this job where I drove all the time and I had gone driven on some of the streets and and I, I, I it had been a while since I had been on those streets and once I went down them and I began to connect all the different streets all around the um, city I was like a kid in the candy store oh so this is how you get here oh I never knew that street went up there way and, and it connected with the, that street and I was so excited and it, I was really excited because it wasn't my gas that I was using to um, learn my way around. But that's the way the word of God is. It connects. Um, it's like you will have learned some things when you were growing up about the Bible. And then now that you're older, um, you'll go down that street. And you'll find that it connect to that other street that you knew. But that other story, the other part of that story. And you just get so excited about his word. Because he has planted word in you. Um, that needs to be fertilized. I'm sure that somewhere along the way, um, you were probably a child just like me. I used to sit on Saturdays and in front of the TV and listen to Jimmy Swaggart and him and um, some of the other older preachers that have long since passed. Um, rest, God rest their souls. And I never knew that God was planting a seed in me that would nourish and grow down the road. And I remember getting into the word and I, I would come across some of the scriptures that I learned when I was younger. And I get so excited about it because now I have a greater understanding of, of his word. And I understand how that connected to this and that connected to that. And it's just amazing. Um, and you'll be amazed too when you get into the word and you realize that there are scriptures where... Um, that you learned years ago. And as I said, um, that's one way. Of, and if you don't have a church home, like I said, I admonish you to find a church um, that preaches the word. Um, and I admonish you to be baptized, <clears throat> to get baptized. 
One, you must confess. No, one, you must believe that Jesus is God's son. Second, you must confess with your mouth that you believe that. Third, you must repent of your sins. Fourth, you must be baptized. And five, you need to develop a personal relationship, get into his word, and grow. There's a, a candle fly that's flying around. So if y'all see me keep on looking up and my eyes going, um, it's in the room flying around. And I'm told that that's the spirit. And being that I'm getting into my word, actually I have my, my aunt's Bible who passed last year that I'm reading from. And both her and my mom, they really love the Lord. And I, they said that when a camberfly, a butterfly, a moth is um, in your presence, that's a spirit. And I know it has to be my mom. It's either my mom or my aunt flying around. And hello, mom. Hello, Auntie Nita. But anyways, um. I just want to admonish you all to get into this word and develop a personal relationship. It's right there on. It's flying around. <laughs> but anyways, um, I just want to admonish you all to get into his word and, and to develop a personal relationship and learn to love on him. And uh, I think it'll be the greatest decision you'll ever make. You can see it flying around back there. It would be the greatest decision that you could ever make. Um, God is a loving God. But he's also a disciplinary. A disciplinarian. Um, when you're not doing what you should be doing. And that's the way we are with our kids. We discipline them when they're not doing what they're supposed to do. But that doesn't say that that doesn't mean that we don't love the, our children. So you have to realize and understand that God loves us and those whom he loves. He chastises. Chastises. So with all of that being said, I admonish you all to give your life so to, to the Lord and just love on him. And learn what his will is for your lives. And the only way to do that is to get into his word. That camouflage is right there in front of me. The last time it was right there, it flew right in my face. So... I just, like I said, I promised the Lord that I would do this video, and I'm doing it. I'm sticking to my word, and and um, that's because I love the Lord, and I believe in honoring Him, and I believe in caring for Him. I believe in loving on Him, and in doing so. That is me loving on you all to say now is the time and the day of salvation. God bless. Love you all.